Welcome to a broadcast of the recent Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorraincounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page, then click on View Agenda. Good morning. Can we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the August 29th meeting of the Lorain County Board of Commissioners. Commissioner Kalo has our Dog of the Week. Mm -hmm. Aww. Hi, sad girl. Jed Clampett's dog we got August 20th. <laughs> Uh, she's a beautiful female. She's between a year and a year and a half old. Uh, she was found August 20th in Amherst Township, and she's been with us nine, ten days. Uh, she'll be available for adoption on Saturday at three. Then, Jack, yes, sir. Uh, she has a great personality, a little bit gun shy, but make a great pet for some. I can't believe somebody hasn't claimed her yet. If you lost a dog, a bloodhound in Amherst Township, please get a hold of our kennel. Uh, again, she's not quite the dog. How many dogs do we have on Jack? 37 today. We have 37 other dogs available for adoption. Oh, sweetheart. <laughs> don't, break, don't, don't break the broken microphone. <laughs> Madam Clerk. <laughs> Under resolutions number one, Job and Family Services bills. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Investments. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Corporations. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Transfers. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Advances repayments. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Requisitions. So moved. Second. Discussion. The one that we held last week was not in the packet this week, and um, I did speak to Mr. Stewart yesterday regarding the chairs that we held back. Um, he did say that he had sent a letter to the commissioner. Mr. Cordes, did you ever find that letter? <laughs> it's quite possible yeah. that it came up here, okay. uh, but uh, I haven't gotten to uh, Monday afternoon, Tuesday's folders, so. Okay. I'll try to look through it here and see if I can find it. Okay. But if he says he sent it, he probably did. We're just a couple of days behind on correspondence. Okay. Um, I did tell him that I had concerns about the fact that we're buying 54 new office chairs. Um, I asked him how many employees he had. He said he, said he had 51. And so every everybody plus are getting new office chairs. And you know, I told him I understand that you know if you need new office chairs, you should replace those that are faulty or, or needing uh, needing replaced, but not to just arbitrarily buy 54 office chairs. And he said it is under um, real estate assessment, which is fine, but most you know people uh, in the public don't realize that there's different funding. They think of it all as taxpayer dollars and, and don't realize that general fund money and real estate assessment money are two different things. So you know, spending is spending, and I just had a concern with um, buying so many chairs at one time um, so I guess we'll wait for that letter and and deal with it next week Ms. Kowski aye Mr. Williams aye Mr. Kalo aye travel so moved second discussion Ms. Kowski aye Mr. Williams aye Mr. Kalo aye bills so moved second discussion Ms. Kowski aye Mr. Williams aye Mr. Kalo aye under the commissioners, authorized various personnel actions as indicated on the summary sheet for employees within the jurisdiction of the Lorraine County Commissioners. Mr. Cordes? 
Thank you, Commissioner. I do have actually a number of issues to talk with the board about in the executive session. Stop grimacing, Commissioner Cahill. It won't be that bad. Yeah. Uh, I have a couple of potential new hires at 911. We've had a few uh, retirements of, of senior dispatchers, uh, so we need to go over those applications uh, and recommendations that have been sent to us by committee. Uh, also, I am in receipt of a uh, uh, fact finders report uh, concerning the UAW uh, negotiations with uh, Children's Services that we need to brief um, and also a potential sale of real estate. All three topics are allowable for executive session discussions under the Sunshine Law, so I would ask at the conclusion of our regular board meeting we go into executive session so we can uh, discuss those items. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Do you have any information on this uh, funding order from the domestic relations court oh I have all kinds of information on it. what would you like to know well <laughs> why don't you go ahead and explain what's going on with this for the general public well you mean the ones that's on professional services is that the one that the deals psychological, with the psychological, psychological evaluation right and I, I actually just received that this morning that's domestic relations court correct I think I've indicated to you guys that I anticipated that for the last several weeks that that was going to be court ordered we used to share that responsibility uh, with the domestic relations courts. Several years ago, um, they wanted to enter into this contract and we partnered on it and we would pay 50% and they would pay 50% and we did a consulting contract. Uh, they felt, and I'm, I'm sure that they uh, uh, did a, uh, uh, a good job on vetting it, that uh, that would be less costly than sending them out. And I'm talking off memory a few years ago now. so. If it's a little distorted, I apologize, but that's that's what I believe uh, occurred, and we were in that relationship for several years. A few weeks, maybe a few months ago, uh, uh, Mr. Messer and I had a couple conversations with regard to that funding, and I indicated to him that the board was not going to be able to give them additional money for that for that contract. Within a few weeks of that, then he came back, and and what I expected was, well, the judges said they're not going to pay for any of it themselves, um, and that it was all responsibility. <clears throat> Several conversations uh, took place after that. Uh, there was some discussion with counsel with regard to how the Ohio Revised Code reads, and then uh, we were told that we had to pay that because it's supposed to be paid by the Treasury, not from the domestic relations budget. I told them that we had an understanding that at least 50% of that cost was already contained within that budget because they had been doing that all along so that we understood uh, uh, that, that that would that was part of their process of what they were asking for funds for. They didn't see it that way. Hence, a disagreement. <laughs> followed by a court order to pay for those services. Okay, and we have the history to show that uh, they were paying for it out of the budget. Oh, they're not, they're not denying that. Okay, and their budget from this year compared to last year, the only reduction is the $500,000 um, reduction from turning point and stepping stone that weren't, um, that's not a mandated funding, but they have the additional revenue that came in from a third party to help out with that cost, correct? There was some conversation about that in, in January of unexpected revenue versus they were going to be able to find resources internally to pay for something. I do recall that uh, you had more conversations with them than I did, but I do recall that they anticipated being able to move funding around to continue those services without, without funding from the board, and then um, somebody came forward and assisted them with supplemental funding for that. So last year it was okay with the way the funding was. This year they have the same funding and now they're doing a court order on it. Well, I, I know not to defend the domestic relations court because I, I want to defend our own funding over here that's, that's been dwindling. They, get, they got hit with some funding cuts from revenue streams that they get that, that are in addition to the general fund monies. I, I don't have a clear picture in front of me of that and I'm not mm -hmm. trying to be contrary. I understand your position greatly but there may have been other events that occurred within their budget that we're not privy to. And, and I have had some uh, casual conversation with Mr. Messer regarding those. And I, I know there was one significant cut that he mentioned to me. It was around $100,000 that he was dealing with in some grant funding. Well, we and also lost the ability because we were going to split on a vehicle also. And that grant well, that, that was, it wasn't really a grant. That was the money had from, from that partnership 
no longer was available because they were trying to move it to cover another the other shortfall, shortfall that was created. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, we've tried to work you know together on solutions. Th this is not a surprise to me on this court order. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. we have talked several times on it. I anticipated it coming, and and as a, well, you can anticipate, there's going to be a few more of these. I've mm -hmm. been holding off on several of these type payments for common pleas, domestic relations, and saying, well, you used to pay this, and they're saying, well, yeah, we used to, but we can't anymore, and it's your responsibility. Yep. And with this, what is the dollar amount to you? Oh. If I recall, it's somewhere 80, 90,000. Do you remember what that contract was for psych services? This is for, I believe, an expert witness fee bill that was going back and forth. And that, but but it's also the psych fees for the, for the consultant, too, I right. believe. I, I'm not sure what that contract is this year, but I know the expert fee was like a little over six grand. And how much the psych contract was right around a eighty, ninety, hundred thousand? thousand? Right, but I don't believe they used her yet this year. Uh I think I think they have. <laughs> yeah. They they're still doing the exams. I think they were taking that out of a different funding source. Okay. Uh, again those those are issues that are that are in front of us right now. Uh, whether it's far as far reaching as covering those exams or it's just specific to the the individual uh, one for this case uh, the other one if it's not included and they're thinking for this it's coming right it, it, the only reason I bring this up is a lot of people always ask about spending here in the county this is something where the judges can just go through and order their budget there's really not much we can do on this unless we want to take them to court and state that they're um, not spending wisely, which uh, I think we do have some history with the uh, courts, all of them, where um, some of the spending could be in question, uh, especially with the stepping stone and turning point. Um, but just for the general public to know that two different branches of government, they can go through, they can order this, and by them doing this, now we're going to have to come up with a way to offset this through a different department so um, elections are important and take a look at the judges don't just look at where they stand on um, as far as justice but how are they going to manage their budget as well because it comes back it hurts the police department it's going to hurt the coroner it's going to hurt every other department in the county when they can go through and just order their budget to where we have all the responsibility and not much of the authority. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Approving the reading of the same the county commissioner's meeting minutes of August 22nd. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Provide for guarantee of payment of principal and interest by Lorraine County in the issuance and sale of bonds by the Lorraine County Court Authority for the benefit of the Lorraine County Land Relegalization Corporation. So moved. Second. Discussion. Mr. Cordes would usually give a perfunctory explanation, or we do have Pat Metzger here. We do, just, uh, you know, and, uh, this is, it's pretty clear cut. Uh, this is the continuation of the relationship between the newly formed land bank and the Lorain County Port Authority as the sub-recipient of uh, grant funding and becoming and uh, acting as the implementation arm of both the county and the land bank uh, to accomplish the goals and objectives as set forth um, with uh, regard to the requirements of land banks. Uh, the availability of money from the AG office is significant as we've talked in the past. We're, we're looking at a few million dollars. Uh, the first 500,000 being a non-matched uh, amount of funds and the second uh, uh, million plus being uh, on a one-for-one -one match the the uh, the unfortunate part even of the first 500,000 is a it's a spend and receive mm -hmm. it's a do and get type of relationship right. and you know, the doing will happen pretty quick to get he's going to take some time uh, therefore we will have cash flow management issues with regards to being in the community and and delivering these services while we're waiting on receipt of funding the the process laid out by the AG, I don't believe it's too complicated or cumbersome, but it is lengthy, uh, the things you need to submit uh, to receive reimbursement. And, and clearly, like most organizations, the state has been under reductions like us, and things are a little bit slower uh, with regard to that. So we're going to have to have a significant amount of cash to work through those issues on a revolving basis. Uh, that said, the, the Port Authority is going to uh, issue notes. Uh, 
uh, and keep it in the short term um, uh, debt management while we work through this process and then they will work with the land bank and the board of commissioners on on future solutions uh, but for right now we need cash flow um, Port Authority does have some money uh, that they can they're starting out with but it's not going to be enough to bridge that gap in the cash flow uh, in order for the port to borrow money since they are not the uh, owner of the ability to raise lower or do away with or and put in place the DRETAC so, um, uh, additions uh, to uh, the delinquent properties, it has to be guaranteed by the, by that entity that controls that, and that would be the Lorain County Board of Commissioners. Similar to what we did with the um, uh, Lorain County Visitors Bureau some years ago uh, with regard to the hotel motel uh, bed tax, while it goes to the Visitors Bureau, that Visitors Bureau, not only are they designated by this Board of Commissioners and can be undesignated and another organization can be designated as a Visitors Bureau Convention Center uh, Bureau because those things are up to this board. So that, that group isn't the group that must get those monies, Shit, uh, can. can get, can those, get monies. those monies. The, you also, uh, the, the receipts from the taxes are yours to distribute. Uh, so when we were working with the Visitors Bureau, they had a hard time, A, being bankable, and B, uh, securing the proper guarantees to borrow money mm -hmm. when they wanted to put their building up. The Port Authority agreed to issue their financing, but the county had to agree uh, that they would uh, pay that debt service from the proceeds of the motel, hotel, bed tax. Once again, you can eliminate that tax or redirect that tax to a different entity, so we could not be um, uh, could not underwrite the debt with the security of that organization had it come from the county. Very similar arrangement now to the land bank. Which was a discussion in our last land bank meeting, and this is just formalizing that process. Uh, exactly. Yeah, what happens if we don't do this? Uh, we don't take down any houses, and we don't access any money from the AJ. Okay, and what communities are ready to move right now? Uh, the city of Lorraine uh, already has, uh, if they either haven't passed, they will be passing. We were out there last week, there were about 15, 18 properties that have cleared waivers and are ready to be worked on. Uh, the city of, of Elyria is has a few that they're, they're close to being hopped up, but they, they still have a few things they need to do to them. Uh, I was hopeful they'd be a little further, but they're still, they're, they're down the continuum enough that there's a clear line of sight that we will get some work from them uh, within a reasonable amount of time. We're meeting with the township representative next week, and we're having open discussions with other communities and setting meetings up with them. If we delayed this by a month, what would it do? Would it be? If you delay it by a month, that's a month that we're not tearing down houses and we're going to get into the winter yeah, and there's going to be less work in the winter. I don't have any intent of stopping it myself, so. Well, the, the only other thing I'm looking at is with the Amherst Township and Sheffield Township uh, sewer rate increases with the city of Lorraine and talking with uh, several of the Lorraine officials, um, it appears that they don't care what type of agreement they've had or what type of agreement we come across. Uh, they're going to hold steady on that 100% increase on the um, residents in those townships. This could possibly give us some leverage with Lorraine. I think it's a totally different issue, Tom. I mean, this is the land bank countywide. I, I understand. You start but selecting communities to go after. Well, it's not. I mean, that's not what the land bank was formed for. The ability of the state legislature gave us to do these things. Uh, well, we know the majority of the uh, properties will be in Lorraine. We are using, through the D-Tax, money from other communities. We're taking away from the schools and that. And um, this is really a, something that, besides going to litigation with Lorraine, it might be something that we can force them to do, to do the right thing with the, um, the land bank. Uh, I spoke with one person, uh, I won't mention the name right now, but uh, what they told me was, well, we have flooding in the city of Lorraine. And by going through and um, adding the additional fees onto the residents in the township, that's going to fix the problem in Lorraine. That's an elected official in the city of Lorraine that's stating that. Well, you ought to said it, though. I mean, to say those type of things, I mean, that's getting pretty, you know, where they're pawning off uh, repairs based on the outside of the communities, I think that would be something you would say publicly who did that to call them on the carpet for it. I can't see where they're allowed to under law 
with all that. Well, an hour with, on the with, with, with regard to that funding, if I may, uh, flooding, not funding, flooding, I, I, think, I think what they may have been trying to share was that uh, some of the positioning I heard coming out of Lorraine uh, has to do with water, water infiltration of existing sewers. Uh, specifically the, the ones that are aging that were uh, tied into Lorraine that apparently didn't have or didn't have or do need maintenance they believe that uh, as bringing an inordinate amount of of, uh, of stormwater uh, through the sanitary sewer into Lorraine thereby overtaxing their system they say they have put flow meters in place to, to measure that infiltration from the townships? Uh, and, uh, from, from that, not just from the townships, from, from that area that's under um, um, uh, argument right now, for lack of another term. The, the, uh, we've had a significant amount of problems with water infiltration, as you know, in our package plants, and to the, to the point where we've relined complete sewers, and you know what the cost is there. Now, I'm not defending Lorraine's action. I, I think that a unilateral approach and, and dropping it on the residents out there was, was was completely um, and and uh, unacceptable and poorly executed without looking at options and discussion points before it occurred. Mm -hmm. But water infiltra infiltration is 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 a major issue with aging sewers, and I and I think that's what Lorraine is it w has been saying. And I didn't mean to interrupt, but no, you're fine. The county uh, just spent what we spent three point six million dollars. Mm -hmm. We spent a ton of money on on relining sewers, right. and and we're still we're still having problems with water infiltration from aging laterals. Uh, on those, so uh, I think what Commissioner Williams is hearing is has has some merit, and I think probably the elected official that said it was probably trying to relate that. Yeah, uh, the, the only issue is the county engineer kind of disagrees with that uh, theory on there, and then when you go through and you take a look at the infrastructure mm -hmm. with the city of Lorraine. Now, if they really want to get into this here, I would love to because this kind of brings into my background uh, with the engineering and quality. I'm going to want to see the calibration records. I'm going to want to see the data points. And I have asked for that information, and um, the trustees have asked for that information. We have yet to receive that, which should be readily available. Absolutely. If that's what they base their judgment on. Mm -hmm. And once again, you know I'm not substantiating right. their and position. I'm right. only and saying what they say it is. I mean, there are federal dollars that went in, mm -hmm. to, um, and also local dollars that went in to help um, try to eliminate that problem with. Um, uh, things that were built in the Amherst Township area. Well, sure, it was part of the the federal funding they received on not only uh, building but upgrading uh, the waste uh, waste treatment facilities right. because it was they were they were given federal dollars for a geographical region that included those areas. Right. Yeah, yeah, it, I actually brought all the paper up in case something came up. Today. Yeah, we just got that yesterday. Um, is there more than this? Uh, th there may be pieces still coming in. Uh, I started going over it, and Commissioner Kahlo asked me about some specific sections of it. Yeah, I was looking through that and highlighting some things. So, th th I mean, it needs to be digested more fully, uh, and we, we need to look over it. But my first initial indication is that it comes close to uh, talking about a cap on a uh, out of city rate, uh, but it doesn't it doesn't get there. There's a lot of whereas what fors and where ifs and uh, not a lot of straight out this is what we're going to do uh, it was probably written by people that get paid paid by the sentence <laughs> uh, because there's pages that i don't think really mean anything in, in the whole agreement uh, but uh, i wish it was as clear as some of the sewer agreements that we have worked on which say you know they may charge this amount and and not nothing to exceed this over the in city rate. We've we've been that clear in the agreements that we've made, uh, but I still think and I'm hopeful that there's still the ability for reasonable minds to sit down and come up with a with a more acceptable solution. And I would like to look at that West Side Intercept sewer agreement that we fostered with the community. Uh, if, it, if that that was agreeable back then, we may be able to use that as a universal tool, get rid of all of these smaller agreements, all of these smaller issues, and come up with one master agreement. Um, and and that, that needs to be worked on. And it not only needs to be worked on in Lorraine, it needs to be worked on in Elyria because we have a, you know, a smattering of different agreements there also. Yeah. And I'm in agreement with you, Mr. Williams, about the whole sewer rate increase, and I believe that we should do whatever we can to reverse that decision by city council but I'm afraid saying you know we're going to delay the land bank because of 
the sewer rates and it's kind of like blackmailing Lorraine and I don't think legally is that something <laughs> we can even do Mr. Ennis is, is it well I mean it's a leverage it, the it's land almost like blackmail though if you don't you know you don't come to terms with us on the sewer agreement then we're not going to do any demolitions on your houses in Lorraine well the way uh, I'll just state my view on this is we're taking money from other communities in order to fund this program through the D-Tax. And this is money that we know is going to go primarily to the city of Lorraine. And, uh, and it, it's, a, um, it's a program that can be beneficial. However, the elected officials in Lorraine are playing politics with uh, the sewer rate increases. I think everyone's aware of that. They know that the residents in the townships can't vote for them. Right. And they know if they did this type of increase on the residents in Lorraine, all of city council would be chased out, and including the mayor. Um, so I think it's just something to use for leverage, stating that if you want to work with us and you want to have partnerships with the entire county, you need to be fair and provide a reasonable rate with them. If you can't do that, then why should the rest of the county pay for something that's going to benefit you? And that being the city of Lorraine. That's how I'm, I'm viewing this. And it's, it's very, you know, other, even Mr. Fowler's made the comment to me that 100% that's a good rate compared to other cities. We could be charging more. I mean, and the way the resolution was written, it was up to 200% is what, so they could actually go another 100% based on the resolution that city council approved. So they could double, the, so they could go be paying anywhere from 50 to $100, what they're paying more today. If they increase it again, that could go up another 50 to $100. We're the only ones in the county that really has a position to try to affect Lorraine into doing the right thing without going to litigation. And we know if it goes to litigation, it's going to be out there for a year or two years. And they know that they can probably wear the residents down and eventually they're going to get tired of it and move on. No, I don't quite think that city council's thinking, Tom. I, this isn't a used <coughs> car deal. Uh, the land bank was put up for the benefit of the county. Now you start uh, trying to hold back this money from cleaning up some of those neighborhoods that are affecting the residents there. Uh, I don't think where that is. I think there's a proper way of working through this. Do I agree with the increase? No, I think there would have been a better way of doing it. But at this point, we have to sit down and do our best to negotiate with them. City Council goes into session next week. And I've had plenty of discussions. Because uh, as I get all the emails on the Lorraine commissioner but uh yeah i don't think that's how you go about doing government that's not what we're elected to do here is to sit and hammer back and forth and you know that's just not how business was meant to be done what we got elected for uh, we're doing a land bank to do a land bank to benefit everyone and granted a bulk of these houses coming down at first for all the city of lorraine because they have the worst but you know they pay a decent amount with delinquent tax also they won't receive and their school district so I mean I'm not looking to hold this up at all and I think we can go into effective negotiations with the city of Lorraine and how we can address the issues with the sewer rates well I, again it's not the politics is what not what I want to do but when I hear from the elected officials in the city of Lorraine how they want to utilize this basically and have other people pay and do the improvements and basically state that we know they can't vote for us that's where i get um, <laughs> very concerned on what the city of lorraine is going to do as far as the elected officials um, and i think this is something that we could use for leverage because they do want to move forward with it they do see the benefit of this but at the same time they are going to be taking the tax dollars um, away from other schools and other communities and um, according to the city they're going to be looking at expanding and charging more for additional contracts on sewers and water so like i said a few weeks ago um, i don't believe the city council was completely aware of what the increase meant to those residents as did the residents not 
realized when they got the letter from the city of Lorraine what that increase was going to mean and how significant it was going to be. So reasonable minds on city council, you know, if we discuss with them and, and help them to understand exactly what happened, I think we can get farther than what you're talking about. Mr. Innes, you didn't answer me. I, is, there's a fine line between leverage and blackmail, and I'm not sure if this would be what this would be considered if we pulled back on the land bank to get the city of Lorraine to rescind that resolution. Well, I don't think it's Commissioner Williams' intention to blackmail them. Um, I'm not going to. No, it's not I'm intentional not. blackmail. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's kind of blackmail, no, but it's not, not really bad. It, it's in business. It's this is bit. how you can go through <laughs> and get force someone to do the right thing. And trust me, to me, doing the right thing should be a no-brainer. You go in there right. and you look at it and you say, you know what, this is unreasonable. This is price gouging. What we're doing is wrong. Right. And I Lorraine, agree Lorraine looks at it as this is the way we can get money without and we don't have to pass it on to our residents. And I think if they went through, if they went through and they used the 30% for um, additional for residents outside the city limits, and they did a 70% tax or 70% increase, and I'm not calling for this by any means, but if they did a 70% increase for the residents in Lorraine, that would have in turn been a 70% increase for all the residents. Right. And I don't think anyone would they be upset? Absolutely. But there would be, it would be fair as far as the way they're and, handling it. And I agree. And I am the reason they're agreement. not doing it, and you know this, uh, Ms. Kikowski, is they would be chased out. The mayor would be a one term mayor if he did a 70% increase on the residents in Lorraine. But because they can't vote for him in the townships, this is what they're doing. <laughs> I don't and know. I'm I'm sure all the people in the townships have plenty of friends and relatives that live, you know, a minute away in the city of Lorraine. Who, you know, yeah. it, it's just because it's in the township, it trickles back into the city, no doubt about it. And you know, this is the reason why I got involved in politics way back when, when I got on city council, is because of a, a <coughs> uh, assessment. You know, right. so you know, I'm going to be there to fight this all the way. But I don't know if stopping one really good project. Is, going, is the answer. I think we can sit with council and we can talk to the mayor and ask them graciously to rescind that. Um, like I said, the I, I, that I mean, that I, I, I hope you're right that they will do it and that we can all see I think we should try that together, first but before we say, you know, stop the progress on the much needed land bank and the demolitions that. You know, we want to not only spend our money, we've been saying we want to get everybody else's money that's not able to, to get those demolitions yeah. done in a timely manner. So mm -hmm. I don't want to delay any progress I, right, on me, the land bank. If they meet next Tuesday, because Monday being the holiday, if they came out and they um, repeal this issue and say, you know what, until we get all the information, we can prove to everybody that this is needed by getting the, measuring the flow for the sewer rates going in from the different townships, and uh, the calibration of the equipment and everything that they have the data to prove this that's fine i mean we could do we could ask them to do that we could write a resolution right now asking them to do it and see what their actions is um what action they take and delay this by one week and see if they're actually going to play ball i just don't know i don't have the feeling that they're going to I wouldn't be opposed to having a resolution, and I think we need some good factual numbers in there as far as what the increases look like to these people, and ask the city of Lorraine to reconsider their resolution uh, on the rate increase. I think w it should be that they repeal right. their resolution mm -hmm. until they can provide the data showing what the, the reason they justifying this increase. Did you make that part of your records request? The records, well, my records requests have been all on the resolutions, but talking oh. with Mr. Fowler, okay. he stated that he's got this. We've asked for the data showing what, how much flow is going in or going out of the townships into the city. We haven't received that. And the meeting that we were going to have scheduled for September 10th has now been moved back to the last week of September. Did you happen to ask for the meeting minutes uh, when Mr. Fowler presented this to council? 
I don't believe we have I think we it. need to get that too. Okay. Because I, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that it was uh, related, relayed to council that this would help future infrastructure projects in the city of Lorraine if they did this. So I, can you, uh, can you ask for that also since you're getting all the other information? Yeah. Okay. And then do you want to hold off on this for one week? No, I don't want to slow the land back down. I don't think we have to sit here and punish the residents of another community while we're negotiating government-wise. And so far in all of our paperwork that we've all gone through, unless Tom's found something in 73 I didn't have that he's Neil sending to me. I mean, we're still digging through all this, and I'm sure city council hasn't been through all of this so I mean no I'm not willing to slow down the land bank I want to get that started spent two years working on that and we're at the point to move forward and if there's 17 or 18 homes to go I think it's our responsibility those neighborhoods and those residents to get those houses torn down well I mean this is not going to I mean this is not me we're not going to give Lorraine a check or going to tear down a house right away anyway so this is just to get the funding in place to be able to go forward with the land bank that's correct yeah it just guarantees the commission so it doesn't do guarantee around. anything for the city of lorraine at this point no it just guarantees we'll do the wraparound guaranteeing the revenues that the port authority through the land bank will be using it's i think so we still have views there and right there's no approval of any demolitions the land bank isn't meeting right, right. now to approve those things this is a guarantee of the county to do the wraparound, guaranteeing that we'll guarantee the revenues coming in so they can go out for notes. And when they're ready to tear down, money is available. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, yeah, go ahead and call for the question. Ms. Kasky. Aye. Mr. Williams. No. Mr. Kalo. Aye. I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to think positively and, and hope that the city of Lorraine will We'll see that what they that they need to rescind that change that repeal that. So, under community development or contract to J. A. Kilby Enterprises Inc. North Route Two in the amount of eight thousand six hundred ninety dollars includes a contingency for any unforeseen change orders for grant assistance to Garnet and Kester samples at three five one eight four Elm Road, Grafton, for a roof replacement. Twelve invitations were sent. Three received. This being the most responsive, complying with specifications will be paid from the home chip chip home repair account. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Under EMA Homeland Security War Contract to Health and Safety Services, Ashland, Kentucky, to provide tactical body armor in the amount of $62,370. Four bids were received on August 2nd, this being the most responsive and will be paid 100% by Federal Homeland Security Grant account number equipment. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Under Golden Acres, increase the room rates at Lorraine County Golden Acres Nursing Home to 176 for semi-private and 178 for private, effective October 1st, 2012, which reflects a $3 increase. So moved. Okay. This is, what rate is that? Is that a monthly rate? Daily. What? Daily Day rate? rate. Okay. Yes. And it's all inclusive. All right. It's all inclusive and uh, it's, it's Do you just. Do second this time? Sorry. I'm oh, sorry. Do you second? Want a second? Oh, second. I'm sorry. Okay. Discussion. Sorry. <laughs> it, it's uh, we we moved the the, uh, the private pay rate with the Medicaid rate uh, on, on what we're doing. Uh, so uh, this is just a maintenance housekeeping issue. Uh, with well, we have we don't have that many pay, private pay beds. Right. It's the rates the same as Medicaid rate. It's usually what we do. Is it okay? Yeah. Any other questions? No. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Caleb? Aye. Under Job and Family Return TANF Summer Youth Employment Program funds allocated by Ohio Department of Job and Family Services for state fiscal year 12 and 13, the county received $648,160.07 and will return $260,064.42, so another county has the opportunity to use the funds for TANF Summer Youth Program. So moved. Second. Discussion. We didn't quite get the participation we needed. Huh? I, I, I knew this was going to come up, and I, I did ask for a report. Uh, it may be in that correspondence file with the letter <laughs> on the chairs. Uh, let, let me say that these funds are really hard to use. Um, with First of all, you have to have, you have to deal with um, 
youth that are at risk for the most part uh, and are, are currently in the system receiving services. So they're, they're a challenging group to provide services to. We had a few hundred thousand dollars of that money over at WDA and we've been scrambling uh, to get that money spent ourselves. So I don't know. I don't even know yet if this return number includes anything that we may have residual over at WDA. Uh, I, I hope that this is the all-in number. We didn't get all this money over at WDA. We got part of this money, but we we even had some of these youth working the fair to help the fair fair folks out. You know, uh, with uh, working around so they could reduce their cost. I think we had ten or twelve people out there. The transportation cost alone to get them to the jobs is what killed us. Um, the, the, but the objectives of the program are such that uh, we, we have to take those extraordinary measures to put, uh, put these uh, youth to work for the summer. So uh, I'm not going to be critical of Job and Family Services. They did give contracts out to uh, various organi uh, 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 community organizations, um, uh, nonprofits, et cetera, that probably were as challenged as, as we were and didn't have the resources we did over at WDA to uh, try to keep the youth engaged and employed. Uh, I think that uh, next year when we look at, especially at WDA, we're going to be revamping our, our youth uh, program completely with regard to work experience and youth work experience and, and the relationships with employers in the community because I'm just simply <laughs> completely unsatisfied with the way uh, we were able to handle this influx of funding both this time and w I thought we had gotten over some of those hurdles with the stimulus money the, the year before with youth uh, employment services, but we haven't. And we need to do a better job, and by year's end, we're going to restructure that whole component of workforce development. We're just waiting for the governor's initiatives to come down with regard to uh, some of the changes in, in workforce development. So I, I, I still think they did a really good job. Uh, the money was unexpected. It came fast, and they got as much out in the community as they could. And uh, it, well, it says 260 to go to another community, but the program is about over, isn't it? It's about over. It'll end in a few weeks. There's just some residual now, but schools somebody, are starting and yeah, things okay. like that. But there, there may be other communities that that can still, you know, can still stretch some of the dollars, or they they may have the need right now, saying we can go another couple of weeks, we can get some of that money. If we don't release it. That's even worse than not using than, it. Yeah. Than not using right. it. Right. Okay. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Caleb. Aye. Hunter Solid Waste Approved 33 refurbished computers to our family of Larry to provide computer literacy training and experience in completing research projects to school children. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Caleb. Aye. Mr. Cortez, County Administrator. Thank you, Madam Clerk. <coughs> Commissioners, I have a couple issues this morning. Um, and I want to start with uh, asking Mr. Romanchek to come up to the. Uh, to the microphone and we need to do some work on NSP uh, with regard to Albany Avenue. D did you give a handout to each one of the board members? I've got them right here. I apologize for this coming late to you. I just got this yesterday and Don was working furiously on it. They changed some, some timelines for us for reporting and things we have to do NS, NSP has been a very challenging program from the from the onset we need to make a, a few awards today uh, and um, I asked him to be prepared to make you a quick presentation rather than just ask you to digest a written collateral in front of you uh, so with that done let's let's keep it brief but uh, I want you to uh, at least uh, hit the salient points okay uh, thank you uh, first and foremost uh, the first resolution that uh, we would need to award today is uh, the uh, actual construction of the four homes on Albany Avenue that we've been working very hard to get everything pre prepared for. We do have the demolition done. Uh, we did our bid opening on Friday. Uh, we had a good turnout with eight, and uh, our lowest responsive bidder was KF Construction. They came in on their base bid of $561,480. Uh, and with a couple of alternatives which include landscaping which is required and these alternatives were put in so that we made sure that we would be able to award a contract and meet our NSP obligation if for whatever reason bids came in high. Uh, building pad prep which uh, is 26,000 dormers to the houses uh, and then there were two others that we did not recommend going so we 
would recommend a total contract award of $601,280 to KF. Um, project needs to be completed by mid-December. We would have brought this to you next week, but uh, the state of Ohio requested that we award the contract this week and provide the contractors an additional week of work time just in case the weather is bad. I, I did have a conversation with you this morning with regard to the alternates and the, the calculation of uh, the successful bidder uh, depending on their uh, cost factors for the alternates and was mm. The apparent low bid is still the low bidder after the alternates were taken into consideration. They were. Um, the, s the second lowest complete bid was Lucas Plumbing. Uh, and they were very similar on the uh, first alternate, the landscaping. They were identical. On the dormers, they were about 3000 more. And on the site work, surprisingly, they were about $14,000 more. That, that's unfortunate. What I, well, the reason I asked to take a look at the alternates with regard to the base component bid was <laughs> I was really trying to find a way to give this to a local. To a local, um, this this firm is not a local. I mean, they're 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 an Ohio firm, but uh, I would have preferred that we had been able to find a way of getting that uh, that bid over to uh, to Lucas, um, so that we 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 had a local contractor employing locals here doing the work. But uh, you can see that uh, we weren't successful at doing that. I just want to say that we tried to do that because a lot of times. You know, the local contractors, uh, they get a little miffed because they're not getting the work, and it's, it's out of our hands. But it's automatic because it's NSP dollars that it prevailing wage is part yes. of the minimum, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, it's federal dollars that right, always been that way. And there's no local preference at all. Right. We, even when we had the local preference right. that is since was litigated out, we wouldn't have been able to apply it to uh, federal dollars. Correct. Okay. Um, the project needs to be completed by December of this year. The funds are from NSP1. And uh, just to reiterate, the owner of the property will be the Lorain County Elderly Housing Development Corporation. And so as soon as we're done, we'll be turning over the project to them. They will be responsible for the uh, long-term upkeep and maintenance on Albany Avenue. Thank you. Uh, that's, that's number one on your list. You can go by number two. It's not Jermaine right now. I, I think we need to go to uh, number three. Yes. Uh, number three. Um, well, I just want to explain them all, then we can. And I've got the resolutions with me as well. Uh, Matt, well, Madam Clerk, if you want to do them individual, I'm fine with that Maybe, too. Yeah. Okay, why don't we why don't we stay with number one? And uh, is there any questions, commissioners, on number one? Nope. No. no. So uh, we're going to award to KF construction in the amount of 561,480. Does it say, like, how, how many square feet these houses are? They're about uh, 1,200. And yeah. they're ranches Three the bedroom basement. ranches, basement, a garage. So it, it, they're nice homes. They're nothing extravagant. Um, we had to do a little bit more site work than we would have imagined. Uh, but overall, they're just good, solid homes that fit within the, uh, the neighborhood. They're not overly sized. Two are uh, actually one is fully handicapped right. accessible, one. and three and all the other three are actually uh, com com compliant. One, compliant. The the uh, <laughs> one will be fully built out, and the other three will be able to be built out uh, if if needed. Uh, but they'll have the proper widths, turn radiuses, etc. Normal home building doesn't take a lot of that into consideration. So later on, when you go to retrofit a home, you find that it's challenging if to, if if the need arises. You're then having to reframe doors and right. So that that adds a little bit of cost to the project, but that was one of the stipulations uh, since we were dealing with uh, the potential for older or um, 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 handicapped individuals with uh, regard to these homes. Do you want to call for the question? Do we make a motion? No, you didn't. So um, we're going to work a contract oh. to cave construction for four homes on Albany and in the amount of $601,280. Correct. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Thank you. Uh, the next one would be number three on the list to take a look at, and it is an amendment to our existing agreement with Huron County to provide an additional $55,000 to them. Uh, from the NSP allocation 
Uh, again, this is recommended from the state. They have found a developer to acquire and rehab one home in Huron County for the cost of about $55,000. That uh, the developer, the county will be providing money to the developer to do this and to sell the home. There will be no program income generated off of this. And the state has requested that we make this change and we're the lead for, the, uh, for our region. And this money that we can't use here in the county we're not that is correct in fact uh, the next one I'll show where I we've at least found a way to spend some more of the money <laughs> and keep it in the county and we're continuing to strive to do that and and Aron has been a sub recipient with us uh, the the uh, so if whoever gets to use the funding we're just we're just the uh, administrative agent, the fiscal agent for that fund. Oh, that's Correct. right, because it's a multi. Correct, Correct. multi county. Multi county jurisdiction. Yeah. Yeah. Like right. So right, right. So right, this right. this is more housekeeping right. uh, than anything else for right, county so purposes. Moved. Second. Any further discussion, Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Caleb. Aye. Thank you. Uh, the last one is actually uh, a little bit exciting. Um, uh, number four, uh, it's to enter into a development agreement with a local developer, Home Buyers Ohio. Uh, been searching for uh, replacement projects since uh, the LMHA Lorraine County Elderly Housing deal in Oberlin, Ohio fell apart. And this developer uh, was able to locate a couple of uh, homes in Sheffield Lake that they can acquire, fully rehab, and then our goal is to sell but with a limited timeline, we are looking, we're also offering them the opportunity to uh, lease it or rent it until they can find a home buyer. Um, we would actually generate program income that would come back to us on this project so that we would then be able to use that money again for NSP eligible projects such as demolitions as they come up or additional acquisition rehab using developers. And then we'd be able to pull off a little bit of admin off of that uh, program income as well to help cover our staff costs. The uh, I just noticed all it'll be all ten homes in the eight that we approved, and then these two all from Sheffield Lake. No other communities got involved, or there was just no market. Our for target homes. areas are uh, Sheffield for new construction right. or and rehabilitation are uh, Sheffield Lake, Sheffield Township. Um, we and this is the developers located these so okay. it wasn't uh, us choosing that was where they were able to find homes that they could acquire and rehab and within with by December yeah, well by December oh. but also don't don't we have to be in a, uh, a target area a targeted area um, so when you get outside <laughs> of uh, some of the townships that are more contiguous to the urbanized areas finding target areas becomes a little bit more challenging uh, that's why counties have had a little bit more of a struggle with NSP than cities have uh, getting some things done. Well, the, the other houses are in the township. These are in the city. Correct. Yeah. These Sheffield two are in Sheffield, Sheffield Lake. Sheffield, Sheffield yeah. Township. The Albany's in, in a township. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. These two are in Sheffield Lake. No, I didn't look at the address. I just looked at the, uh, for the mailing, it just said Sheffield Lake. <laughs> them, so. Right. These, there's two here. Or Sheffield Lake, the other ones we did, Tom Albany Avenue, Sheffield Township. Right. Okay. This, this project has been extremely taxing <laughs> to get these, this NSP money done. It's, I think it's probably one of the hardest programs that we've ever worked on. And uh, changes came at the federal level and then with state guidance. So it's, it's been morphing uh, a few times to make it a little easier. But when it first started, it was almost impossible to spend to spend right. this money so you know, I got to compliment the community development department for you know getting to this point where we're actually doing this work because two years ago I would have said I don't think so uh, but you know even getting the, the land redone up there we took those six lots kind of condensed them down to four we had a bit of a fight with the planning planning commission and um, but uh, Sheffield Township's been a good good partner and we found some developers so apparently we're on the right track and things are moving and and remembering uh, we didn't just use our money for demo a lot of the communities are just doing yeah, demolition. demo we're doing redevelopment too 
when you need to point it out. And that's, that's even more of a struggle <laughs> to, uh, to get done. That was another component of NSP, but most, most of the larger communities have not done redevelopment. They've simply done demolition. Um, the assessed value that they're showing, uh, like this one for 912 West Drive, is it current assessed value at the 83.7 and you're anticipating once the repairs are done that it should be able to sell for about 98,000? That is the developer's uh, projections based upon their analysis of the market the, in those neighborhoods. Yeah, but. If I can weigh in on that a second, let's keep a very, very broad open mind on what the potential resale is. Uh, in Elyria, they, they, they had some uh, some projections that were provided to them that didn't exactly uh, come about on some of the some of the homes there. Um, so I don't want you to look back later on and say, well, well, you know, this did you know you told us it was going to be this. And it's a strictly long range projection that that we did make that was provided to us. Right. Uh, but that may not, it may not at the end of the day come, come to pass. Well, that's why we put the ability to lease them out. Right, they correct. don't exactly generate the income back. But correct. it's not our property, right? It's no, home we, buyers. The correct. home buyers Ohio. of Ohio will be owning it. They're going to, so they're going to, they? they are a uh, company out of Avon, Ohio, um, Dwayne Linder and uh, Andrew Isaacs. And then they're, uh, I forget the mother's name. Um, Anybody can really form one of these if they want to. They want to try to uh, develop homes and and sell them and or uh, lease them as long as they want to be you know obligated under the requirements right. of the NSP. Yes, and they've got a. They've been doing this for about four years. They've only have a couple of rentals. They weren't really excited about getting into uh, potentially owning the real estate uh, and managing it, but with the tight timelines of moving a family in uh, they did agree to a lease option to be able to uh, fulfill it uh, they do believe that they would be able to sell these homes the other thing is they are unable to actually make a profit so if whatever money they put into it is what they will sell it for and then we will give them a developer's fee at the completion of the project equal to 15 percent of the project costs so that was that will be what, how they're making their money is if they're able to sell it, uh, they'll make 15% of the project cost. It would be similar to um, general overhead and profit on a construction deal. Uh, so even though they they did all of this for their performa because this is how they run their business, it has not that will not be the sale price. The sale price will be whatever money is invested into the project. This this is allowed. So it's not helping somebody flip houses and making big, no. big profits. Okay, that's kind of what it sounded like when you first. Well, <laughs> they, they actually the the program envisioned assisting them to flip houses, but because there's so little margin, the program allows for a a flat developers fee right. uh, to be applied because they were not getting any developers to the table that wanted to engage in this process yeah. early on. And that is actually one of the changes that went in. Originally, developers were allowed to make a profit, and it wasn't working uh, the way anyone would imagine it would have, and developers shied away. So with the developer's fee, at least, again, it's almost like they're a construction company, and they're bidding to rehab a house and once they're done they get their developers fee or their profit on it so yeah they they figured out redeveloping a house in a distressed neighborhood without continuing to improve the neighborhood didn't increase the value of the house after they did all the renovation mm -hmm. uh, so the program elements needed to be changed to allow uh, those folks to come in and partner with us but not partner so much that they were losing money on being a partner to help improve the community but they did the initial investment on, they acquired the property, they purchased they, the property. Uh, they have it uh, identified. They have not acquired it yet because they cannot acquire the property until the environmental review is done. Okay. We just got our uh, release on Monday from OHPO and uh, the state of Ohio. <laughs> but they'll get that money back, the money that they pay or pay to purchase we're, the house. We're funding it, the entire project for them to begin with, oh. and then we will recapture all of the funds that we put into gotcha. it, okay. except for the developer's fee. Okay. Who, yeah, who looks at the, the sale price? I mean, do we, 
We will uh, be monitoring, monitoring it. We do mon yeah, because one I'm looking at is at 806, and um, I know depending on where you're at on a block, it can change. Right. There's one property. Um, it's larger. Same uh, bedrooms, bathrooms, 1,500 square feet, 85,000. You go block down. Smaller house, 1,300 square feet, and it's 108,000. So I was just wondering how they came up with Those are the, actual sales. Yeah, those are, those are comparables. Those are oh, those are, those are sold uh, homes. So yeah. Those are sold, okay. Yeah. Depending on the I thought that's what they were home, going. I figured 98 square Those are both nice neighborhoods, mm -hmm. Broadway and West Drive. Yeah, you know, those are actual yeah. comparables for right. homes that have sold. All right. I thought that was the yeah, I see comparable on it mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Overall, I've been very pleased in dealing with this developer. Uh, they've been very responsive. They've even given performas um, that show renting is tough at when you, it's a hundred percent loan, <laughs> and I'm making sure they pay us back. <laughs> so they're they're anxious to sell as well. They're, these won't should not be long term rentals. Okay. I will make a motion to, is it number four? Yes. Approve number four. Second. Ms. Kessel? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Are we doing number two? Are we doing number two? No, we're not no, going to do you. number two. We don't need to do number two. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Is that Mr. Cordes' report? We're still on his We're report. We're still on your report, Mr. Cordes. Oh, you got something else for us. <laughs> wow. The, um, that's a double-sided, and it's going to be made into a pamphlet. This is your uh, collateral for your upcoming um, service to Cleveland with regard to time, route pulsing, and cost. Um, last week, uh, the board... Uh, somewhat unexpectedly since we had talked about it for several weeks and didn't get anywhere and then boom we we did it i, I didn't have this with me we hadn't uh, finished up all the time schedules on it a couple things here for your consideration uh, we've we have talked about the service leaving the port authority commercial complex aka the old diy building on route 57 and and, and abbey road there um, I need to make you aware the service will be will provide pickup there on the first run and drop off there on the last run of the morning and the evening route, but it will not pick up in between. Mm -hmm. We just could not make the timing in the Cleveland and come all the way back down to that building. So the service from there will be a bit limited, but it'll still provide service from there. Um, that's not something that we, we had previously talked about because we were talking about service from all three locations. We do have it from all three locations, but limited at that at that point. So uh, we have that noted at the bottom of your collateral uh, with regard uh, to the side with times on it. Also, we've looked at the the uh, potential for our Leary and Lorraine routes to be at the drop-off points so that people could make the connector. We do have, we have synced that uh, a bit. It may require some additional tweaking uh, as we see how that that works out with those two lines but we believe that 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 they're fairly closely aligned but now we need to start doing it there's always some unpredictability with regard to buses arriving and leaving uh, depending on traffic conditions if we have uh, to load a few wheelchairs onto the bus it takes a little bit more time and so forth um, I'm probably going to leave instructions that if if we haven't made the connector I want the Cleveland route to wait as long as possible without missing their time frame uh, before they leave the, the point where ridership on the local bus would have gone to the Cleveland route. The second consideration was uh, the cost of putting the service on. You can see that it's a uh, 365 uh, each way, which is includes a um, a fee above a supplement for the Cleveland service above what we're charging for the service in county and a 725 one day ride you want to ride back and forth to Cleveland all day fine uh, so that would be really the price of a round trip ticket of 725 we are currently not going to honor transfers from the local routes to the Cleveland service 
Cleveland Service got to generate its own revenue. That's what you. That's the mandate that was put down by this board. And if we if we do transfers off the local routes, it will not generate the revenue necessary to come close to the ridership we need. We can we can review that at some future date. I want to start that way, and then we can have discussions in the coming weeks to see how that's working out. Uh, better we deal with it later than we impose, have to reimpose something at a future date. Uh, lastly, I'm having all the advertising frames put on the buses. I've already lined up a few advertisers to uh, generate some local dollars. But let me state this, don't get too excited. There's not enough frames and enough rolling billboards on the buses to to generate all the local dollars that are needed. We're going to need the ridership. Um, the load is going to have to uh, increase uh, significantly. Uh, we're going to need somewhere between you know 30 to 4, 30 to 50 percent ridership uh, um, on these buses to uh, to make a significant impact on the cost. Um, there may be some other variables that will occur along the way, but at, at this point, I I can't really uh, uh, see a clear line of sight to discussing them until we we do this. Um, so if you have any questions on this, now is the time to talk about it because I want to release this schedule and time and cost. And um, I think that uh, we'll be ready, I thought, in about a week to put the service on. I've also had shelters or they're either installed or in the process of being installed at um, um, the, uh, uh, the Port Authority Complex, the Board of Elections, and... Um, we're installing the benches and so forth down at the transportation center. Because of the high overhead on those porticos down there, I'm also installing a bus shelter down there. Uh, part of this test run will be you know, during the colder, rainier season, and I want to make sure people have a place to shelter uh, from the elements when, when we do this. Speaking of transportation center and buses, any other word from Greyhound? I think that I am uh, um, about 98% sure that Greyhound will be coming to our transportation center, and I hope to be able to tell you that officially next week. All right, uh, we have one term and condition that we're working on. It's a, it's not a significant one. I believe I can negotiate it away. Uh, so uh, I, I hope that uh, I'll be able to give you good news next week with regard to Greyhound. Since we haven't really talked about that, we've gotten, I've seen a lot of criticism out there, especially to the city of Elyria and the county. We have been working on this, and we always worked on it. We never gave up. Mm -hmm. You have to have a willing partner <laughs> to be able to accomplish something, and we didn't have that. But um, uh, establishing a new relationship with some folks with Greyhound out of Detroit, uh, above certain, you know, above the rim, so to speak, uh, and having them visit here. Uh, gave new confidence to a potential relationship, and they they have were here, they have toured, and um, I'm comfortable that we're going to probably find the relationship. And Leary has been working with us on that too. So I want to want to let you know that the mayor has been involved in her staff too. So it's a good collaboration. Uh, but uh, uh, back to uh, our transit here, the 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 um, so the shelters will be put up and. I've also, um, um, and Ms. Davis has done a good job uh, for me. Um, we had some problems with parking at the Board of Elections during the presidential election coming up um, and with people coming and going. We've been able to secure um, a, a uh, use of the Gauger slot uh, next to the uh, catering hall. Um, right now, it doesn't appear it's going to cost anything. Mr. Gauger has you know, been very community minded and, and worked with us on that. Um, and I, I want to show our appreciation for that. Once we secure that uh, uh, MOU, I'll, I'll ask for a letter of appreciation or something from the board to recognize that he's helping us with that because we're going to take the back part of that Board of Elections lot, and there was some concern that, the, that with the influx of uh, early voters and staff and so forth that uh, there would be a need for additional parking. So that, that matter has also been uh, resolved. Uh, at least I believe it's been resolved. So if you have questions, let's, let's talk about them now. Uh, it looks like we're going to be utilizing three buses to, to two. Work, two. So the, um, the one from the transport or the uh, DIY is going to start there and go 
to the Board it, of Elections? It'll go to the Transportation Center, because it's right down the road, and then it'll go to the Board of Elections and then into Cleveland. So they're going to make two stops along the way? Correct. Okay. And um, then the rest of the loop will be two stops until they return to the maintenance garage. Okay. So we're only using two buses. We have how many in storage? We're about, I think we have about six or seven now. We pressed uh, several of them into service to retire our so what are you do with the other five? Are we still looking at possibly losing those then? I, I'm, I'm actually going to ask the FTA to let us see how the service progresses before they, they force us into a decision. Um, I still think that if we can make something work up here, uh, I really would like to look at that North Ridgefield issue. Um, you know, Commissioner Williams, you, you brought yeah. that up to me, and I, I still think there's great potential down mm -hmm. there. One of the pro let, let, me, let me state this problem clearly so you understand. RTA gives a $5 round all day ride on their bus over in Cuyahoga County. But they have a 1% sales tax supporting their transit over there. If we had a 1% sales tax supporting our transit here, we'd be given an all day free ride. Mm -hmm. the, the, there's, there's, there's no way. In Rolls Royce buses. <laughs> right. So you know, I have to figure out the North Ridgeville issue down there and make it cost effective for people not to go another five or six miles down the road to catch. RTA and support our transit down in that area, and I, I believe that a solution can be uh, can be teased out. Uh, but I've been busy working on on the northern route, and I know you sent me out there to count license plates one day <laughs> over there by uh, Great Northern in the in the lot there. And there's plenty of Lorraine County, uh, and I was only joking. You really sent me out there, but you suggested that if right. we take a look, uh, there's plenty of uh, Lorraine Countyans parking in that lot and uh, jumping a shuttle. And we may be able to produce a better service for them, but we'll, we'll have to look at it. What I'm encouraged about down there, though, is it's a, it's a clearer line all the way up into Cleveland. So the route timing will be shorter and the you know fuel cost and things like that will be reduced. I, I'm really, really anxious to see if we can do something there because I would like to put an airport route back on uh, for the students, especially the students out of Oberlin that, that used it. Um, if we continue with the old one uh, route and we have the Elyria route, it would be kind of long and tedious, but they, they could potentially make it out to the airport vis-a-vis -vis having a shuttle out of North Ridgeville. Uh, so something for us to think about and take a look at, but we need to make this somewhat workable up here first. I have had nothing but positive comments um, about this route and also um, I've had a few people suggest why not have a bus route that goes to the Cleveland Browns games or the Indians games and things like that so that might be something we might want to look at couple, also yeah a couple things with uh, with that um, I believe it can generate a considerable amount of, of uh, use I, I have to see how it works with going to the games and getting back because of the volume. If you take somebody to the game, you, you darn well better have a seat to take them back home. And uh, I, I don't know if we're allowed to sell tickets just if you don't buy a round trip ticket, you can't get on the bus with regards mm -hmm. to the rules we operate under the FDA. I, I don't want people, you know. You want to run a charter service? Well, you know what happens, Ted, is you go into, you go into the Browns game with some friends, you lose your friends or right. you know, get into a little drunken argument and so you'll take the bus back and then people that took the bus in are standing there and don't have a ride home mm -hmm. uh, so you know that doesn't make for really good service uh, or happy residents so this you know I got to look at what constraints we can place upon that so that we can ensure that if we take them there we can take them back home uh, the the uh, so while you don't think that would be a considerable problem I, I think it, it, it could end up being a situation but I, I want to look at that also, if we can make something here work better. L let me also state, and I know this has been a long presentation, but I continue to see you know, comments uh, and hear comments from folks about, well, we don't run enough service for people in, in the county, and here we are running service for the people that want to gamble at the casino, and how stupid it is. We ain't running service for people going to gamble at the casino. We're going to use them to run a service for the people that need to get to Cleveland. I, and we've gotten a lot of emails from students and people that work yeah. um, and people that are coming from back and forth that 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 will probably use the service. I'm hoping that there's enough people that want to just recreate at the casino 
to underpin this service that we can provide it. We would not be having this conversation about Cleveland service if we didn't think that the casino people would generate enough ridership to support the people who actually have need ridership. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. That's how this conversation came about months ago. And that's how this conversation should continue every time we have a chance. I could really care less about people getting on the bus to go gamble at the casino. I do care about people getting on the bus to go downtown or people uh, that, that may have to uh, um, work down there or may have uh, other um, more um, serious release reasons to be in the downtown area uh, and I was surprised to learn that there's a few people that actually work out here and live out that way and want to take the bus here which was surprising to me uh, so uh, let's see what happens but for no no way no how are we doing this for casino gamblers how does it constitute it being a charter because I know like the charter buses that do go to the casino, um, for instance, and somebody paying ten dollars for the bus ride there is actually getting like thirty dollars in casino play. Are I don't we think allowed to get kickbacks from the casino for the people that ride the bus? I don't know. For first, people, not for us. I don't know. People. First it was blackmailing. Now it's kickbacks. Kick <laughs> for us. Kick, kick for the people that are on riding the bus. I just want to know. She asked for the kickbacks. <laughs> not for us. For the people on the bus I riding the I bus. I understand, Commissioner. You mean in, you would probably need incentives? I think the rules are under the point to point or the charter services. You don't have stops in between. It's select service. You're going to one place, dropping off, picking back up. Right. It's, if it's a real gray area when you start. We're, we're not chartering. We're we're running a, an open a route. route. Right. We're anybody running an open can route. Anybody get on. Anybody can get off anywhere with the stuff. No, but I'm, stuff. I'm What I'm asking is, can we get money for those people riding the bus from the casino to get extra play money, or some kind of extra money for the transit service well I'm gonna send them my advertising package they can right. certainly buy some advertising on the buses but I, I'm not sure they will mm -hmm. um, the, they're paying the, uh, people to go to the casino now well on other know, buses uh, on on charter buses from Lorraine County yeah I'm unaware well, of that right? yeah. no, like St. Anthony's I think uh, has a bus that they basically give that oh, well, money. They're, they're negotiating with the churches and things like that to, to run busloads of people there. I, yeah, they are. I, I understand that, but I'm I'm doing public service here. Right, I, <laughs> uh, I know, but the uh, I can certainly I can certainly ask them to buy some advertising on the buses, but that's as much as we can do. That's pretty pretty much. The casino could always say, "Show us your LCT pass, and we'll give you twenty bucks in free play." Or something like that. Yeah, that's what I mean. I'd like to see. Something from the casinos for the people going to spend money there. Oh, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> uh, I just don't want to cross the line. Yeah, that's right. I uh, don't know where the, the uh, this is open. This is an open route. Correct. It's our Cleveland Cleveland route, um, and uh, I'll keep you you know in the loop over the next after the first few weeks about how the ridership goes. Because quite frankly, if I don't see the ridership developing strongly in the first, you know, six to eight weeks, we may not have to go all the way down the road with it uh, to see what. We, but I want to see how the advertising goes too. I, I think I'm going to be able to sell most of the advertising uh, pretty quickly. Okay. Okay. Uh, the only thing I would like to see changed on here, you know, my preference, I don't like to have my name on the buildings other than the one I work in. Um, on the back side, you have Lorraine County Board of Commissioners, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you have our names. So I would like to have those removed. Um, I didn't even catch that, Commissioner. Why don't we just say the Lorraine County Board of Commissioners? They're right. Even the second box that says funding and cooperation with the Lorraine County Commissioners, that to me would be adequate. Okay. But I understand. Not particular what it says. Mm -hmm. Commissioner, you care what it says on the back of it? No. Nope. Okay. Okay. Done. Done. Uh, that yeah, I think that's report? enough for the, I think that's enough <laughs> for this morning. Okay. Mr. Annis, assistant county prosecutor. Commissioners, I do have uh, an update on two matters of uh, pending court action, and I need to discuss uh, the details regarding a third pending court action in executive session, please. 
Commissioner's report. Well, first of all, um, I was sad when I read the paper today. A uh, really, really great, wonderful guy passed away. Joel Smith uh, owned Rosewood. And I was glad to see the picture they chose for his obituary. He just had the biggest smile on, in that picture. And that's how I always remember him. He's always had a smile on his face and always tried to you know, be cheerful, even uh, going through what he went through through his illness. And uh, he's going to be missed by many people. So my condolences and prayers to his family. Um, Monday I had uh, a Goodwill board meeting and it was bittersweet. Uh, it was a good meeting, but it was a goodbye uh, party for Bob Reese who is retiring. Um, one of his uh, things that he was really wanted to accomplish is to try to get rid of what he called the counterfeit boxes, those drop-off boxes where you can donate uh, clothing and shoes because we don't know where the proceeds to the money for those types of um, boxes go to so I'm gonna work on that on his behalf um, I don't know if you've noticed but every time I go past it uh, one of those it's either you know, it doesn't say clothes shoes and a chair or clothes shoes and a, a couch but there's always like big things next to those getting soaked by rain and I'm thinking, why don't they just donate to Goodwill? Because they do so much uh, good with the money that they receive um, from those donations. Um, Tuesday, all three commissioners attended. We had both the Transportation Improvement District meeting and also the Stormwater District meeting. Um, tonight we have a, a big uh, steak fry, but we also have to be here for that conference call, or do we? can we call in from another location, Jim? The We're going to be judge. briefed on that with uh, Mr. Innes in executive session. Oh, okay. Am I invited to the steak fry? Pardon me? <laughs> Am I invited to sure, the steak fry? Sure, you are on the menu. We thought, <laughs> we, thought you were, we, we thought you were cooking. They have an extra special treat for you there. <laughs> it, it's, it's the Democratic steak fry tonight. So uh, I told him I would go and cook, but. Uh, <laughs> Did you see the menu? Republican shits kebab. <laughs> Hey, I, you know, there's a lot of good people over there, and, uh, you know, me and Dennis Flores can catch up. He can tell me what's going on in the uh, Democratic Party. <laughs> <laughs> or the Tea Party. <laughs> okay, that's the end of my report. <laughs> oh, let's go. Uh, great fair week. Congratulations to Megan Bremke as president of the fair. You did a great job as usual. Great turnout for the auctions. Uh, Cult Manufacturing, Sturks, everybody just stepped right up to the plate. So, I mean, it was uh, very nice. Uh, I ended up with a lamb myself, and Ben Fligger and I got the reserve champion goat. I heard uh, you bid up the price of the uh, champion goat pretty champion good. The goat went two and a half times record. Ben and I stopped at 2,400 and went to 2,500 Sturks Catering. Yeah, I'm sure Sturks is real happy with you. <laughs> they could have let us just have it. So I got to figure out how Ben and I are going to cook a goat now. Also, uh, he's down from a donkey to a goat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so many ways we could go with that. Yeah, I guess. Uh, also, last night, uh, Executive Committee of the Rankine Democrat Party met. Uh, I discussed <laughs> our levies, uh, the 911 replacement and the TB replacement reduction, and they both have endorsed it unanimously, so we can use that wherever we need. I would hope Tom would get the same thing from the Republican County Rep Party to endorse it as a bipartisan issue. As I explained, 911 is sort of like an insurance policy. Um, we have a packet for Johnson Controls basically for them to come in and do a study. Uh, there's going to be no cost for us on the study. If we want to go through and get the engineering work done, then we would have to pay for it. A study for what? It just, go ahead. We, we've, we've been down this road before. It's an energy conservation study. Oh, <coughs> so we, what we did years ago when we yeah. did all the building up, what's this area for? The, no, there's, there's some, uh, uh, the regulation's been fresh and a little bit, uh, that allows some, uh, a little bit different opportunity. We don't have a lot of buildings that, that would benefit, but we're getting a little aged over at um, Job Family Services with the infrastructure was 1995-ish. Was, uh, uh, so there may be some opportunities there. Um, Board of Elections, uh, some HVAC systems there that we may benefit from uh, some work there. And, and the, the, uh, we're going to look at some of uh, the smaller outlying buildings. Clearly the biggest uh, um, 
uh, ability was the Justice Center, this building, uh, the jail. But all of those have been done in the last couple of years. So we're getting all the, we're teased out all the efficiencies we can get. And in fact, I just got from Lisa this morning, we transferred our, our money to pay the debt service. We've only missed it one year, the savings one year out of all of them. And we're back in the, in the black with regard to the savings paying for the debt service on all the upgrades that were done, a couple million dollars, several million dollars. Uh, but uh, I'm interested in seeing if we can't get something going on those other buildings, and if we do this project, we can pay for that, that new infrastructure uh, under this house bill with the energy savings. Okay, so that's still available, but under a new? It's under a new house bill. Um, the uh, I did look at the house bill 295. Commissioner has no applicability to us. I don't know if I sent you an email no, on that, but... It, it only it talks about the, uh, the, the the financing of a project um, and it gave different terms for the financing but it didn't really work for us okay. um, the the um, the look would be at no cost but they'll recommend solutions but if they go if you want to go further than a recommendation because it require you know engineering and mm -hmm. um, RFPs and specifications that you have to pay for now you you pay for you you only pay for that if you don't go forward with a project. If you take their recommended engineering, you can fold the cost of that into the energy conservation upgrade into all of that, and it can be all part of the bond and the capital infrastructure improvement. But if you choose not to progress after the engineering is done, then you have to pay for the engineering. Correct. The entering the MOU is strictly an administrative function. I can do that. It doesn't require a resolution. But I wanted to make sure the board was briefed on what was going on, and uh, I met with the these individuals with uh, Commissioner Williams. And as I uh, recommended several years ago, and the board did, I think we should take a look at this again. Okay, I'll take your recommendation. Appreciate. It. Okay, here's the MOU. And uh, last week, the uh, governor um, actually had a meeting. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, with uh, residents, or not residents, with individuals from Lorain County and the um, uh, surrounding counties, uh, including the uh, schools, on how to come up with a regional approach for transportation and uh, reducing costs. So I have some information in my office that I will be passing out to you as well. So, uh, end of my report. Board correspondence. Move the reading be waived. Second. Discussion? Moskowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kahlo? Aye. Public comment? Anybody wishing to come up and address the board? I think we put them all to sleep. <laughs> Seeing none, I move we go into executive session as outlined by the administrator and assistant county prosecutor. And second. Second. Moskowski? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Kahlo? Aye. This has been a broadcast of the recent Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at 9.30 at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorraincounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page. Then click on View Agenda for a printable copy of the agenda.